What up data nerds, I'm Luke and welcome to my channel where I make data visualization easy. In this video today, we're gonna to be focusing on how to get VS Code or Visual Studio Code on your computer. It doesn't matter if you have a Mac or a PC, we're gonna be doing the install process for both and showing the differences. I remember whenever I first started Python, I was really confused on where I should be writing and executing my code, and I didn't know what solution to use. So this video is to help you set up that solution so that way you can use Python on your computer. For this video today, we're gonna to be focusing on the install process for VS Code and also why I recommend VS Code. For the install process, we're gonna be focusing on three main things. One, installing on your computer, whether Mac or PC. Two, we're gonna be enabling the extension for Python. And then three, we're gonna be launching a Jupyter Notebook within VS Code to make sure that our Python is operating properly. And then finally, we're gonna wrap it all up with um, the reasons why I recommend VS Code. So with that, let's jump right in. As a prerequisite, you must have Python installed on your computer. So if you don't, feel free to follow the video in the link above where I go through installing Python on an with an Anaconda distribution. But to just check to make sure that you have Python installed, for a Windows, you type in search for CMD. On a Mac, you would press Command Spacebar to la launch the Spotlight search. And then from there, search for Terminal. And with both of these, they're gonna launch the command line and you would go in and type in Python and it will tell you, uh, if you have Python installed, it will actually launch into the Python interpreter and tell you which version you have installed. So getting into the install process, come to your favorite search engine and just type install VS Code. From there, select the first link of download Visual Studio Code. We're now at the download page. Uh, you would select your applicable machine, whether Windows or Mac. I'll select Windows. I've downloaded the .exe file, so I'll go ahead and open the file. User agreements pop up, so I'll go through and of course read every line, um, accept the agreement, and then press Next. For this setup process, for Windows, it will specify where it wants to install it. This is perfectly acceptable. For Mac, it's actually gonna install it into your Downloads folder, so you'll have to move it after this, so you may not see this on a Mac. And then do we want to set up uh, a shortcut? Yes, we do. You can also select additional icons um, and make sure that the Add to Path uh, is selected. From here, we're gonna just select Install. And then it is installed and we can go ahead and uh, leave this check mark selected so that way it launches VS Code. So that completes the steps to install VS Code on your Windows machine. I'm gonna switch over to a Mac now and show just one more additional step you have to do. So here we are on a Mac machine and I've gone through the identical process of downloading VS Code and whenever you complete the download, it installs it into your downloads folder. But we don't want it here, we want it in a location that we can access later on. So if you go into your um, locations of uh, Macintosh HD and then you have your applications, that's where we wanna actually put the application. So I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna drag it right into here. Very simple. So we can go ahead and close out of this. So now I can go ahead and launch VS Code by going to applications, either using the Finder like I was in before, or I'll just come here to the uh, window. Now that we've completed the process of installing VS Code on both a Mac and Windows, let's move into adding the Python extension in VS Code. So um, back on the Windows machine, we'll open the program. Once the program launches, we'll come to left-hand side, has a couple, few different options, and we'll come to extensions. And then from there, you can search Python, which it's appearing right now, but just wanted to show you can also search and click on Python. From here, we're going to want to install this extension. So the extension is installed now. We can go ahead and close out of this and go back to the file explorer. And then from there, we can see if we want, we can show all commands. We can do a search. If you press Control, Shift, and P, on a Mac, it's gonna be Command, Shift, and P. Pops up this search bar. And let's go into our next step of 
verifying that it's working by creating a Python file. So we're gonna create a Jupyter notebook for this. And I can see it's already popping up. We're gonna to wanna to create new blank Jupyter notebook. Now that we have launched the Jupyter Notebook, we have this pop-up down here that's saying no Python interpreter selected. We also have down in the left-hand corner of a select a Python interpreter. So we can select either one of these. I'll just select this pop-up right here. And then from there, it's gonna pop up with all your different environments that you can have, that you have set up for Python. Right now, I only have the base uh, environment set up, and that's the one I wanna use. So I'll just click it. And at any time, if you have another environment you wanna to switch to, you just do the same thing. You'd come down here, click it, and then you would, if there was multiple options, you could change which Python version or which uh, virtual environment you were using. Now that we have the Python interpreter selected, let's go ahead and just enter a simple Python command of a print hello world to make sure that it's working properly. And then I press shift enter and it will execute. So we can see from testing that uh, we've installed VS Code, enabled the section, and Python is working properly inside of VS Code. So now let's look at why I recommend you should install VS Code for Python. The first one is that it's free. There's other applications out there that claim they're free, but then when you need to upgrade, they actually will charge you money. Um, but I feel like this is an all-encompassing solution, so I really like it. Second thing is it's a very lightweight solution. It doesn't take up a lot of space on your computer. Um, some other applications take up even more space than this. So I really like the footprint that it leaves. The third thing is that it doesn't just, it's not just limited to Python. You can also change to other different uh, languages as you become more advanced in uh, data analytics, data science. Uh, fourth is it's available on all platforms. So we did it on Windows and Mac. And then finally, what I really like and what we'll be using a lot on this channel is the actual integration of the Jupyter Notebooks. And you run Jupyter Notebooks right inside of the uh, code editor itself. And it's really simple to actually execute and utilize compared to a lot of different applications that aren't as easy to get up and running with Jupyter Notebooks. This video is part of a series where we go through and set up Python on our computer and establish the base knowledge to get up and running with Python. For the next episode, we're gonna be focusing on virtual environments, a very confusing topic that I wanna explain sort of in detail of what is a virtual environment and then also how to set it up and manage packages, specifically with the Anaconda distribution. If that video series seems interesting, please consider subscribing. Also, it'd be awesome if you smash that like button and drop a comment down below on what you would like to learn in Python. Hope to see you again.